Welcome to Earth Common Journal, The Launch Pod, where we invite authors, dignitaries, and guests to discuss our annual theme in an on-the-ground podcast series. In Volume 8, we discuss the shift of climate change to climate adaptation. We're your hosts, Jacqueline Ohm and Cole Kosh, and this is The Launch Pod. <laughs> episode, we speak to Claire Wolseley, a editor at Earth Common Journal for Volume 8 and a communications major at McEwen University. Thanks for coming in today and having a bit of a conversation. So we have a prompt, which was to discuss and have opinions about climate change and climate adaptation. And since you were very involved with this recent issue and know how we changed from climate change to climate adaptation as far as topics, what are your thoughts on the shape of the journal or just those topics in general? I think it's really interesting, like Lucille was talking about how we talk about climate adaptation because at this point we are, like the climate has changed and we are in a period of where it will continue to change, but right now we are adapting to it. And I think what's really interesting about the two articles I edited, which, um, Oh my God, I don't know the title. <laughs> no one is an island. I, 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 the other one changed. So I was oh yes, it, sure uh, that I was, um, as the managing editor, I had complete authority to change those. You can edit so this out. Was <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it's, it's really interesting because one of the articles I edited, uh, Global Warming Hype, was about basically climate change denialism, like people who even though we have seen these radical changes, uh, continue to deny that climate change is real or that it's a nat- there are natural patterns in the earth, like it's part of the natural cycle of things. Uh, but the other article I edited, which is uh, No One is an Island, uh, the really the main message of that one is talking about that it is a thing, like climate change is real, but who is to blame for it is often shuffled off to the individual rather than um, the actual like main actors in the climate crisis, which uh, tend to be obviously like corporations, uh, businesses, and large bodies of people rather than individual consumers. Yeah, that was a really interesting thing for me to read And it's not something that I was completely blown away with, but it's true the way that it's communicated. We all have our individual impacts and every individual can do what they can as far as adapting. But how, let's say during COVID, when a lot of people were not using their cars or not maybe consuming as much energy in the same way that they were prior, uh, previous to COVID, the overall CO2 levels were not going down in the sense that the industries were still functioning, producing, factoring, um, emitting. So while individuals maybe were pulling back a little bit on their carbon footprint, there still was a huge carbon footprint being produced for um, agriculture and energy sectors. And that's perhaps not communicated as much how they have a larger impact. Individual impact is important, but what if you have like a individual organization that accounts for maybe 10,000 individual impacts. Yeah, that's that it's really interesting because the article the the authors in that article do talk about how there there definitely was an impact from individuals in the sense that I believe like car emissions were down and things like that like there are individual impacts but they're just compared in and those impacts will be important are important and will be continue to be important like personal actions still do matter but they are nothing compared to the other like the like you said like those agricultural those business uh emissions that are created Mm -hmm. it's like big systems and those create the biggest impacts which is while we're all like one human system and if we acted together as a group, maybe there would be a bigger impact as far as change, but it's it's not necessarily, we're not necessarily there. There's just so many of us, and how do we all act like a group if we're still fighting and denying 
certain things to be true. Like if we're in the denial stage, it's like uh, the stages of a grief. If you're in the denial mm -hmm. stage, then you're still not doing action, right? It's still a, a kind of like a push away, a push away. Um, and it'd be interesting to see when we all come into a place where we accept it and then we're moving forward because I think that's sort of the energy of acceptance. <laughs> 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 and then, okay, now what do we do? Yeah, I think that like acceptance is something that has shifted so much in the conversation, like within even just I think the last decade. But yeah, the but the depressing thing is the action part in a lot of ways has not come. Like we have so much of the change that we've seen already and we'll see in recent years is already baked in into the what we're what we're going to be seeing, which is again climate adaptation. That's why we even if we scale back uh, and make major changes, like radical, radical changes, we still will see the effects of what we've done in the past decades, in the past century. Yeah, that's true. It's, we're not going backwards. We have to just go forwards, and there's going to be new things. It's not just going back to the old ways, um, which you know, kind of contributed to our current situation, mm -hmm. old ways have, of doing things. Have you seen actually have some solid like nuclear fusion and the potential for limitless energy is like on the horizon right now i don't like know, limitless like clean energy not not through you know like once you start the machine it doesn't ever stop it just makes it's basically we're making our own sun and we're taking the energy from it and they're already they've already done it like in a small scale hmm. so i'd uh I don't know if it's uh, the, the time to get into a conversation about <laughs> nu nu nuclear fission. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing that I, what limited knowledge that I do know, but um, it'll be interesting just to see, like just more ideas, more ideas. Let's like, let's not just have one idea of energy. Let's not just have two even, like I would love. Yeah, I'm, I'm just all the ideas. Let's just brainstorm after we accept. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. And I think uh, another major part of that, too, is uh, just changing. I mean, forgive me, my <laughs> anti-capitalist tendencies are coming out here. But uh, changing how we think about growth, too, I think is a huge part of we've structured our basically our entire world on the idea of on unending growth. And that's just we live on a finite planet with finite resources uh, we can't achieve all of those things, especially as the climate continues to change. It'll make it even harder for us to adapt. I think it's um, maybe a, a human error to forget our finite position. Um, perhaps the pursuit of growth is to deny it, to feel stronger than the fact that we will not be here. Like regardless of climate change uh the, you know apparently the universe will implode <laughs> uh, one there, day there, right like it like we are only just going towards that and i think the acceptance of the limitations that we have my thought might make us a little bit more humble to how we integrate ourselves with our natural world or that we are the natural world part of that we are not outside of it <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Claire, that was lovely. <laughs> See, that, that wasn't so hard, hey? Oh, I kind of did it, I guess. You did do it. <laughs> and thank you. And um, I hope you're not rushing out, but it, I want to sign your, your journal. I want you to sign mine. But if we can't get in touch afterwards, then I'll find you in the research yeah. classroom and barge in. <laughs> I'll be there <laughs> every every Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, thank you again, Claire. Yeah, you're welcome.